I couldn't believe that it hadn't been done 15 years ago. And I was in a do-it-yourself shop yesterday and they were listening to our test transmissions. And I said, how did you find it? He said, well, by accident. I said, there's about 200 of us listening to it now. This is, you know, getting all the people on the internet in the north of England, mm -hmm. rock music fans. And the guy said to me, why wasn't this done 20 years ago? And I said, I couldn't explain. I said, well, to be honest, I don't know. I said, maybe we didn't quite think of it properly. You know, and, and of course, you have to come up with a format, then apply for the license. And when all the licenses have been granted over, you know, the last whatever years, 10, 15 years here in the north of England, um, it's been different formats. Well, I'm doing drive time, so you've got quite a, you've got speech heavy parts of drive time but in the lead up to drive time because i'm going to start at two o'clock you're still going to play lots of rock music and i'm hoping that that it will be in a way a brand new old-fashioned radio with interviews and with with all that stuff at, at drive you know speech content in terms of issues of the day and you know whether that's fairly serious or quite light-hearted and with interaction with phone calls and texts and emails uh, local radio, I mean, and I mean that. I mean, my, my great passion was local radio when I first started, and I was on Piccadilly Radio at the time, and it was a local radio station. You know, you would talk about corner shops and you know, mention a particular street. And a lot of changes over the last 20 years. You know, from a DJ's point of view, how has it changed in terms of the job? Well, from the job, there's now about 20 stations where there used to be one. I mean, that is, that's a real difference. I remember when I was first on Piccadilly Radio uh, going to do personal appearances. I mean, I did one at Ladywell Hospital in Salford, my hometown, and all I was doing was cutting the ribbon and saying hello, and 5,000 people turned up. I mean, and I remember doing uh, a bonfire night in Heaton Park, and there were 60,000 people, and it was just us. It was just the radio station playing a few records and saying hello, there were 60,000 people there. For the first time for a while, I feel that the station's been set up to play great music, and the first prerogative is, let's get these people in to play some really great music and make some great radio programmes. Then we'll sort of work out what it costs and what we've got to do. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the fundamental is, let's make great radio programmes. Whereas the biggest change for me from 28 years ago when I started is, at that time, that's what it was. Oh, wow, great radio programmes. Now you think it's right. We've got X amount of pounds. How can we squeeze a radio station into that budget? And of course, well, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. We can scrap that. We don't need that. And we can get the cheaper version of that. And you think, hang on a minute. What about making great radio programmes? Are you describing GCAP there? Um, I'm describing the industry. I think, I think the industry's like that. I mean, obviously, I've had uh, GCAP. Uh, the changes and and uh, and its current situation where it's been bought by Global uh, and that was I think that happened because of financial you know the financial situation which wasn't we're making loads of money final century situ the, start again the financial situation was uh, crikey where's all this money gone and that for me you know is maybe uh, an extreme, although there are other groups that have got real problems. But it's radio generally. Radio generally, you know, seems to be downsizing and and seems to be run. The first guy in the building is an accountant. Mm. Whereas I get the impression where I am, where I'm going to start, that the first people into this building for rock radio were people who'd made radio programmes. I mean, you might say that the biggest change on 20 years ago, obviously there's liberalisation, a lot more players, but you've also seen a far greater interest from the city, which at the time, you know, when the money was being put in and invested, it was a great thing. There's far more attention paid to cost control, for instance. Is that the thing that's changed the philosophy? Yeah, I, I think that probably is. When I started Piccadilly Radio, I mean, I, I didn't know a lot about business, but you almost got the impression it was owned by a bloke. In fact, at one time, it was Owen Oyston owned it, so it actually was owned by a bloke, who you would see occasionally, sort of, well, it seemed a lot of him wandering through the building. You know, it is just business, as Don Corleone said in The Godfather. But, but you can have a business and do it correctly and have fun. It is supposed to be about fun.